It's been a great uh, experience to partner with Alan Light in uh, research uh, about gene expression because as the clinical collaborator, I could choose the patients that I thought had the right clinical presentation and send them out for the study. And the, you can definitely see the, exercise, the effects of exercise in ME on, uh, in term, with the use of gene expression. And it, it immediately changes the expression of sensory receptors and uh, adrenergic receptors and these uh, immune and cytokine receptors that match the clinical presentation and match the way pa patients explain their symptoms. The negative effects of excess exercise or too much exercise, actually any kind of activity uh, in patients with ME can be profound. Um, and it, it leads to pronounced symptom exacerbation, fatigue, pain, more cognitive uh, complaints. I have seen patients get deterioration of their sleep uh, after exercise and so it's basically the, the whole uh, symptom complex can worsen after excess activity. Because uh, deconditioning plays such an important role in uh, the well-being of patients with ME, I have spent quite a bit of time helping patients know how to find a way to do some kind of exercise to, to improve their illness state. And so I have come to believe that there are many possibilities for maintaining some level of fitness. It depends on the severity of illness and sometimes that changes uh, in the same person. So uh, we try to focus on maintaining or improving muscle strength, flexibility, and also uh, a bit of cardiovascular exercise, which is more like walking, it's essentially the fitness of your heart instead of the fitness of your muscles. And the aerobic activity or cardiovascular activity and especially upright activity seems to be the most difficult type of exercise. So we focus on very small incremental improvement in muscle strength at different, differing places in the body, core body, the, the kind of muscles you need to function day to day and flexibility so the patients don't become uh, too stiff and rigid. And those things can be done in very small increments uh, with periods of rest. We also try to uh, use exercise that minimizes orthostatic stress. So the exercise, in, especially in people who have more orthostatic intolerance, exercise can be done supine or seated. And sometimes the very best situation for exercise is in water because water um, is is uh, there's less uh, stress on the joints, and it's a hydrostatic pressure tank. So the deeper the water, the higher the pressure. Also, patients tend to sometimes be horizontal in the water, so there's less orthostatic stress. It's very difficult to get to water. Ill patients, by the time they get to water, have done about as much exercise as they can do, so. So the limits of exercise in ME are very individual. Um, and th the limit is the threshold of triggering post-exertional malaise symptoms. That's the limit. So understanding where that threshold is, is a moving target. It's very challenging. Um, for patients who are moderately ill, that threshold goes up and down and they have days they can do a little bit more and days they know they need to rest and recover. For patients who are so severely ill that they're bedridden, that might be a very tiny threshold. Um, but the key it is to not stay exactly the same. So patients say, I can't exercise. And I say, well, you can do one more thing than you've been doing. Because your level of conditioning will, will stay only at the average level of activity you're able to tolerate. So if you do 30 seconds of a contraction of a muscle, that will move you that much farther towards strength. So it really needs to be adapted to the patient, to the situation of the patient. But the, the key in exercise is not to trigger relapse symptoms. So I tell my patients, don't do anything that makes you sick the next day. 
whatever you do, you should be able to recover from after one night of sleep. And if you have pain, nausea, fatigue, cognitive issues, anything the next day from that additional activity, then you should rest until it resolves and then try again with something different. And different activities are more uh, have different uh, effects on post-exertional malaise. So muscle strengthening might be better tolerated. So I think stretching is flexibility is the best tolerated than strength, and last would be upright activity and aerobic activity. But that's the least important actually in it, to develop. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube. Tweet naar @mecvsvereniging of mail naar wvp@me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.